Prakash Yasudyan was born in Kumarapuram Topur in Kanyakumari district to Nyanakan and Salome Yasudyan in 1944. He was the sixth in a family of seven children. In his own words, he says, Beloved parents brought me up as a religious boy. He began his education in Valparai, where his father worked as an administrator in a tea estate in Pachamalai. He then moved to Madurai to finish high school and completed his undergrad studies in the American College. The year he turned 19, he began to seriously examine the claims of Jesus, and this resulted in the start of his journey through life as a firm believer in Christ. In his own words, he says, Will you also go away? God asked me on the 15th of May, 1964. I decided not to go away from God and committed my life to Him. The same year, in a small prayer meeting, He challenged me to serve Him through the song, Yen Meet Par Sendra Padayil. In my heart, I said yes to God. He remembered us in our low estate. His love endures forever. In 1965, burdened as well as enthused with a desire to reach people for God, he joined Youth for Christ, also known as YFC. Dr. Billy Graham had a big influence on Prakash's life. Other early inspirations were Dr. Markham, Mr. and Mrs. Cyril Thompson, Miss Ruby Alagamani, the Wheats, the Pollingers, Mr. Victor Monogram, Raja Tyagraj, and his wife Tara Tyagraj. He often translated for co workers. They would continue to serve together for a long time to come. Here we see him with Reverend Theodore Williams and Dr. Ken Yannikin. He received much training in his early years. You might have recognized a very special lady in the last two pictures. Our story now takes an exciting little detour. He was now engaged to Rani Patience Johnson, a school teacher from the town of Nagarkoil, who had long asked God to bring her a, a husband that loved and served God. He sent her this very special postcard that Christmas. What exactly was on the other side of this postcard, you might ask? The rest is history. Thus began a very unique and spirit-led partnership that the Lord would use in incredible ways to impact thousands of lives around the world. And all the while, he was growing by leaps and bounds in his knowledge of God's heart, God's word, as well as skills that helped him communicate the gospel he loved. In 1970, his daughter Shiny was born. He loved teaching God's word and slowly developed a simple, clean, clear style of teaching the truth. He began writing he wrote poems, short pieces, and song lyrics from the truth that became his, as he experienced the unfailing reality of Jesus in his own personal life. And the music, you may ask. He began writing with the first three chords he ever learned to play on the guitar. Later on, he wrote more complex tunes, some even influenced by classical musical patterns. 
The first song he ever wrote was Unakaga Nan Maritene Yanakaga Ni Yenna Sedai. His most popular song is Yesu Podume. Some other songs he wrote are Yenandai Vandidayo, Christu Yendan Jivanadal, and others. He also trained Sunday school teachers, VBS teachers, counselors, youth workers, and many others. He writes, God trained me as I sought to train them. Preaching was something he initially struggled with. A critic asked him, Who do you think will ever invite you to preach? But he persevered. And then in 1973, Billy was born. As he faithfully followed the call of God and stayed true to his calling, doors began opening for him in rapid succession. And people flocked to hear God's word preached all over Tamil Nadu, often coming forward in large numbers to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord of their lives. And then, doors began opening in other states. He went to Kerala for the first time. They came to the meetings in boats, he writes. And soon, doors began opening all over India. He passionately wrote, People listening to preaching, restless, empty, lonely, aimless, careless, powerless, come to Jesus. He preached in Northeast India together with Augustine Salins during the big revival of the 1970s that broke out all over Nagaland. All the while pleading with people, come to Christ. He is the only hope. Come. Remember the critic who had asked him earlier, who would ever invite you to preach? This is what he wrote down in response. He who calls you will do it, for he is faithful. Over his lifetime, he served with organizations such as Ambassadors for Christ, Axe Institute, Bethel Agricultural Fellowship, Haggai Institute, and RZIM, as well as alongside many others. He pioneered the work of RZIM in India, beginning with just one small desk squeezed under the staircase in his home. He would go on to then serve as Executive Director for 18 years. Prakash Yesudian stayed true to his calling and preached the gospel all over the world, seeing thousands come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. His first book, Launch Out, spoke of his passion for sharing Christ with others. The succession of books that followed include Fishers of Men, Save Some, Keys to Kingdom Living, and many others.
He also spoke regularly on radio programs and entered the digital era by releasing some of his messages on discs. Even though he often preached to vast crowds, he still believed in being a grassroots person and strove to connect and empower individuals. Across the years, he also trained thousands in leadership development, by example, as well as in the classroom. In 1998, in recognition of his contribution to the field of evangelism, the Hindustan Bible Institute and College conferred on him a doctoral degree. Here's what a couple of his dear friends had to say about him. Hello, friends of Prakash and the Yasudian family. This is Ravi Zacharias. I'm actually in Philadelphia speaking at the Gideon's Convention and then beginning a six-week, eight-country tour. My heart is heavy with all of you at the loss of this dear and treasured friend in Prakash Yasudian. You know, my friendship with Prakash goes back over 40 years. I think of Prakash as a man in whose DNA God framed the passion and the calling of an evangelist. I don't recall him ever talking about his calling without that description. I am an evangelist. I want to evangelize. His writing showed it. His preaching showed it. His life showed it. His sacrifice and commitment showed it. And his family was behind him all the way. It's a huge loss. You know, the, his breed is vanishing. The man or woman called to do total evangelism in their life and their living is becoming rarer all the time, from villages to cities, from people whose thinking was not as complex to those whose successes were rather huge. Prakash's message never, ever changed. I will miss him. I will miss him dearly. It was always good to know that he was around, and his loyalty to me I will never, ever forget. To Rani, to Shiny and Robin, to Billy and Beth and the grandchildren, our thoughts and our prayers are with you at this time. There are just two thoughts I want to leave with all of you. The phrase has often been used of a remarkable person as a long obedience in the same direction. A long obedience in the same direction. That was Prakash, a determined, committed obedience, same direction, like the point of an arrow from the time he was on his honeymoon, took his wife to a Christian camp, all the way to the end, even when he was in a walker, talking about the love of Christ. The scripture says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Prakash's mind was always stayed on the living God, and that's what he drew peace from. And now, my dear brother Prakash, as you have fought the good fight, you have finished the race, and you are with him, whom he preached and proclaimed. I look forward to seeing you, my dear brother, at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ and fellowshipping with you. The pain in your body is over now. The struggle is gone. You are breathing celestial air, and you are a new creature, done only as God can do in this glorified body. Farewell, Prakash. God be with you as his family and all of the friends around. I wish I could be there. I miss all of you and want to say thank you for honoring the memory of a great man of God. Goodbye. In another memorial service for a distinguished Christian leader, I heard it said, the greatness of a person is denoted by the kind of memories one leaves behind. Brother Prakash Yesudian will be remembered by numerous Tamil Christians in India and around the world for that one beautiful song on Jesus he had composed. Enakai jeevan vittavare, ennodirukka ilandavare, ennai endrum vali nadathuvare, ennai sandhikke vanduduvare, yesu podume, yesu podume, endanalilume, ennilayilume, 
Yendan Valvinile Yesu Podume. He did not simply compose it, he literally lived it till the very end. It is one of the very few Tamil Christian songs which had a tremendous evangelistic impact upon numerous enormous people. The reason for its most significant evangelistic impact was that it emerged from the heart of an ardent evangelist. I do remember Prakash Anand, as I call him always, as a good friend and an affectionate brother. I first met him in 1976 when I heard him preach at the Hindustan Bible Institute in Chennai. Since then, I had the honor to team with him in several evangelistic events. We were faculty colleagues for more than 20 years at the Hagia Institute, Singapore, Maui, Hawaii, USA, teaching on different aspects of evangelism. One of the greatest of honors came to me later on when I served as his pastor at Emmanuel Methodist Church for five years. In all the 38 years of my acquaintance with him, I have noticed that Brother Prakash never ceased to be a passionate evangelist. I have known incidents when even as he was suffering from an acute respiratory condition, being hardly able to speak, he would still insist on preaching the gospel with a deep passion and conviction. True to his name Prakash, he shined for the gospel always and everywhere. And true to his name Yesudian, he labored in Christ's vineyard with the intensity of a slave for Christ. In this brother Prakash, the shining one, reminds of what the Lord told prophet Daniel with the reference to the end times in Daniel 12 and verse 3. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. As a passionate evangelist and an eloquent communicator, the Prakash Yesudian traveled extensively, crisscrossing all over India and around the world to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to lead many to righteousness. He lived true to his name as a shining slave of Christ. Raniaka, Shiny and Robin, Billy and Beth, and your children, Dan and Celie, Mr. and Mrs. Abraham, and everyone in the family. Padmini and I shared with you the pain of a great loss. Yet we also rejoice with the Lord's angels and saints in heaven over the celebration of the homecoming of a one who faithfully did the work of an evangelist, who fought the good fight, who finished the race, who kept the faith and now has been crowned with the crown of righteousness. The greatness of a person is denoted by the kind of memories one leaves behind. Truly, the Prakash Yesudian has left behind for me tons of memories of his passionate commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the preaching of his gospel. These are memories which can be matched only by a few others. In the midst of mixed feelings of pain and celebration, we also thank God for the blessed hope of our own resurrection and reunion with our loved ones who died in Christ at the time of His second coming. And our prayer is, may the Lord come soon. And until then, may the comforting, strengthening, Sustaining hands of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you all. And it's such a joy to see you all. How are you all? Very sad. You belong to a rich party. <laughs> 
different day on that, you are happy or you are glad. Uh, you want to be, be happy, you come to our house, it's not very far. As I would say, I will make everybody happy and uh, I'll give you a cup of coffee and then you can go. Uh, a preacher, after a long uh, journey, came to preach and he was very tired and he said, I am tired, I will sit down and speak to you. And the people said, preacher, we are also tired, we will lie down and listen to you. And before that happens here, I should be through. You know, Paul said, I have become all things to all men, so that by all means, save some. If Paul is here and you ask him all, what is the uh, your your goal? And he will say, I have become all things to all men, so that I will save some. You and I cannot save everyone, but each one can save some people. That's why you are in a session like this, where you can become better acute, you know, to communicate the gospel. In Tamil Nadu, uh, over the past couple of years, there was a lot of people who started praying for our country, particularly in the context of the election that we were facing, they started praying. 24 hours prayer meeting, 12 hours prayer meeting, all night prayer meeting, whole night prayer meeting, and all sorts of prayer. And in tears, people used to pray. I, I've been with some of my friends who used to uh, uh, conduct these prayer meetings, and they were in tears for our nation. You know why? People, whenever they committed sin, they are committed sin, they forget the living God, and God says, God's righteousness says, these people should be destroyed, but at the same time, God's love intervened and said, these people should be forgot, forgiven. Finally, you send your own son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross, to die on the cross, to save us. But there are many people who have forgotten this living God, and there are many, many people who do not even know about this living God. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we have to do something about uh, for these people. And so we pray that you fill our hearts with your love. During the rest of the days of our life, we want to do something to deliver the people out of the clutches of their sins so that they can turn towards the living God.